Welcome back my Rosa Monkeys to this your GK channel and my personal sandbox. My name is Leona and people call me the Resin Queen. Others may call me the Queen Bitch. If this is your first time in this channel, you're in luck. So a lot of things have happened uh, in the last couple months. Uh, yeah, a bunch of you just came out of nowhere. So now we are at 40,000 40, subscribers and I still can't believe it. Um, it's been a long while since I've actually done a giveaway and I thought this would be a great opportunity to continue to share my passion with you. All of you will get to see the process but only one will get to keep her. Yes, you heard right. This figure that you're about to watch being painted will be the giveaway prize. So that means that one of you is gonna be very lucky. So the figure, as you saw in the title, is Super Sailor Mercury. And she's doing her Aqua Rhapsody attack. Most of you, if not all of you, know that I am a big Sailor Moon fan and it is very close to my heart. And I think it's fair to share that love in this giveaway. Be sure to stay until the end of the video to get the details on how you will be able to enter to win. So sit back and enjoy this mini review slash painting process of Super Sailor Mercury. So let's get started. Opening the box up, we are met with her sample picture and a pair of water slide decals for the eyes. But if you've been here long enough, you know, I won't need these. Then we got the parts list and the instruction manual. Now the packing is always great, I gotta give it to them. They make sure to bubble wrap all the fragile parts to avoid getting any damage. Now when you do get your kit, you will be faced with pore tabs, and those need to be removed. I like to take my nippers and remove as much as I can, but also being really careful as the tiny pieces can be a flying hazard. Sometimes you do need to pay attention before cutting tabs so you won't accidentally cut any connection pegs. So I always make sure to dry fit if I have any doubts. That way I make sure that no small pieces are actual pegs. Clear resin is more brittle than regular resin, so you have to be extra, extra careful when cutting tabs. This one does have a peg, but we won't need it as I'm gonna actually pin it to a base. Overall, the tabs were very small and easy to cut. The fitting is almost spot on. I really like how the skirt was sculpted. It leaves no room for swiveling, and it keeps it in place with these teeth-like connections. However, the clear peg of the harp was warped a little, so I did have to heat it up and make it straight so that it can connect to the leg. As always, we continue with the cleaning. I am using a mix of one-to-one -one purple power and water, but if you can't find this in your country, you can always get any biodegradable degreaser or even oxy. And always be sure to scrub thoroughly with an old toothbrush. And keep brushing while rinsing with clean water. Let's get to pinning. Now I'm gonna leave the resin peg on the bow because if the figure falls by 
accident or you apply pressure to it, it might actually break. So it's better to replace it with a metal pin. And I just measured the thickness with my caliper and then matched it with metal pins. The reason why I always pin my figures is to give all the parts stability, something I've been saying for the last three or so videos. Glue can sometimes fall apart or break with time, or if an accident happens and the figure falls, it's gonna be ugly. So it's 100% recommended that you do this. There are several ways to pin. It does take practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. One way to get a straight alignment is to drill directly through the two connecting pieces. The other one is to drill through the female connection and placing some sticky tack on the male connection. Put together slightly and then pulling apart and you'll get the imprint of the hole you just drilled in the correct place. The only place where I saw that needed extra love was the leg. It does swivel a little bit, so I'll just, you know, fill it up with putty and we'll be done with that really fast. And just like the bows, the peg on the harp will be replaced. It doesn't really affect the effect, as the pin will hardly be seen through the clear resin. Work was minimal on this kit, which is always a welcome occasion. I like to use my polyester putty as it hardens within 30 to 45 minutes so I can continue to work faster. I've noticed that I've changed putty types over the years and this one is by far my favorite up until this point. Unless someone makes a new type of putty that hardens in less than a minute, this is my go-to type. As always, apply Vaseline to the area where you don't want the putty to stick to and to remove it, you just need to rub it with alcohol. Sometimes I'll need to go back and re-putty some small areas, but that's just so no gaps are left behind. Then I just go in and apply putty to the skirt to fill in those areas for a completely clean connection. And after that, I just make sure to remove the excess with my toothpick. Alrighty, E2046 used this reference to base their sculpt. I believe this was made by Marco Albiero. Marco's art has always been amazing, but my guy here sometimes likes to take artistic liberties. You don't really notice it unless you have OCD like me and you need to have everything like the original soon. And the face is pretty much wrong. Her mouth should be open and, well, uh, Marco left it closed. So I'm just gonna go in and do some lip surgery to make it accurate to the scene in the anime. I 
And for this, I'm gonna use some Tamiya Epoxy Putty. With the same sentiment I had for the mouth, the harp also needs some refining, retuning if you will. Because when you look at the scene, you can clearly see there is at least five strings on that harp. This one has four, so I decided to remove them all and replace it with thinner ones. Oh, is this right? Maybe I should think this through. I mean, how am I gonna add new strings? I, I think, uh, I'll think of something. Why do I feel like I'm about to cut the wrong wire when defusing a bomb? <laughs> you think I'd do it? <laughs> well, yeah, I had to. It was a poor tab. I had to take it off. How else would I be able to replace them? You know, with the advent of the UV clear resin that's been made popular by Asian craft artists, this would not be possible. It used to be that you couldn't really mod any clear resin because you didn't have anything to mod it with. It's not a problem anymore. I had these acrylic rods from a while back and they were the perfect size to make them into water strings. Now I'll just add a drop of UV resin and it will stay in place. After that's done, I just need to go back and sand off the excess resin to make it uniform. So E2046 tends to pre-sand most of the kits they sell. I'm super happy that they stopped over sanding, which was a huge problem because they would flatten the area where they sanded. But I'm glad and relieved that they took my recommendation and not do it anymore. So there isn't really much to sand at this point. While they do sand the seam lines, some pieces do have uneven areas where the seam lines were located. So it's easy to fill quickly and sand. Those would be the places they would oversand in the past, and then it would be flat. So at this point, it's easier to fill than to re-sculpt. So thank you so much, guys, for taking my advice in hand. <laughs> So as I said in my last video, I love using light curing putty because it hardens in seconds after being exposed to any light source. And this is ideal to fill in any pinholes better than regular putty. And then just sand off the rest and you're done. So we're finally at the fun part. 
Painting this kit will be a breeze because it doesn't have a lot of things to mask, which is always a plus on my book. I really like how they have evolved in dividing the parts in a kit where there's minimal masking involved. To start, I will do a white base on all the parts. Then I thought to start appreciating the bows, but the blue I choose was not right, and to make things worse, I was still having issues with my airbrush, and the paint was too thinned out, so the spray was too strong and I had to go back and tone it down with some white. This time, I wanted to just not mask the boots at all, because both the boots and the sleeve have white stripes on them. So I made sure to just mask those stripes, <laughs> you know, remembering from the last video that I did the opposite and save some time in masking tape. Some people asked me in my last video on why I pre-shade even though I go in later with pastels again, and that's because the base color will always affect the main color. So using a dark color underneath with the softer one on top will effectively make some shades. But I like to define shadows even more in certain areas. So I go in with pastels, that way I can control where more shadows can be added. So I'm gonna use Modo's 3-step Pomex Skin Color Series. I like it a lot and that's what I'm using. And I also made a review slash tutorial on how to use them in my Skin Tone Guide series, which you can watch by clicking on the cards in this video. Everything was going fine, but then for some damn reason, and that reason being my fan, some debris landed on the leg while the paint was still fresh and practically ruined the job. So I had to painfully remove the paint and start over. Oh, 
Okay, with that dealt and placed in a clear area where no dust is in the air, I proceed to remove the masking on the boots and the sleeve. And just as I expected, there are some minor paint bleeds and a few areas that need some touch-ups. And like I said in my last video, as long as you seal your work before you mask, you can always go back and correct mistakes with some Windex when using acrylic paints. And finally, I'm adding some accent lines to the bottom of her boots. And like I mentioned before, I like to go in and add some extra shadings with pastels, even after having done some pre-shading. This is just to define them more clearly. I also like to shade white with some light blue, particularly for sailor suits. I like to do this before adding the pearl finish as it will diffuse the blue just a little bit and it will look pretty nice. At this point, I decided to mask the tiara to painted gold. Now, Tamiya came out with this new curved tape some years ago, and it's great for small curved areas like this. It's particularly made of vinyl and not really paper, hence why you can bend it and it won't tear. I also went in and masked a little area on the bottom of her throat. Once the little masking was done, I went in to finish everything and added the pearl white finish to the Sailor Fuku. I don't mind it being a little glossy, but... 
Okay, I need to stop here and rant a little bit. I am not one to purchase pre-painted figures, much less from Bandai, you know, for all the Sailor Moon figures that have come out. Ever since I saw the first ones, I thought they look pretty cheap. I mean, I get that the fans like shiny stuff. No, ooh, shiny. But honestly, every time I see them bring out a new figure and the hair is glossy and pearl colored, everything else is like the entire figure is glossy except for the skin. Honestly, it looks really cheap. That's why I like my figures to stand out from, you know, Bandai's line of pre-painted Sailor Moon figures. I like to use different finishes for different parts of the figure. That way it doesn't look cheap and it actually looks a lot. That's just my opinion. You can now continue with the rest of this video. I'm done. I tend to change plans ever so often when painting kits because new ideas come flooding into my mind. And this time I thought about giving her tiara a crystal finish instead of just painting it blue. So I took my tiny engraving bit again and carefully removed the resin. I painted it clear blue, added some few sparkles, and then with the same UV resin, I made that little gemstone dome. And just like the boots, the little sleeve decorations on her arms also needed a few touch-ups here and there. For the harp, I decided to go half blue, half clear to tune out that, that strongness of the blue. And I thought it looked a little plain, so I decided to use some paint that I got from Australia. <laughs> that sounded so Scottish, but oh, whatever. And I actually have this color shift paint. I wasn't sure if I should use it, but after a few coats... Have you ever heard your inner idiot come out before? <laughs> Apparently mine comes out when I'm really amazed at something. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna do a review on these paints. More on that soon. Now this looked amazing. It had a blue-green purple shift and it actually made the part look like magical water. Couldn't have asked for more. Then I decided to use the same paint on the sleeves for her shoulders and wow, I am out of words to express how amazing this looks. Now, for her lovely eyes, I wanted to try and replicate the Super S eye style done by Ikuko Ito. She does really recognizable, big, beautiful eyes that make the animators run out of ink from all the lashes she gives them. Even though the eye sockets don't have the shape, they're flat enough to paint them and expand the upper part of the eye to match the style I want. And as always, I start from the inside out. So I do the iris, pupil, and then lashes, and lastly, the eyebrows. I don't really have a specific method to do them. I pretty much eyeball how large the iris will be by looking at the original reference on my phone. I've done it this way for years and it's what I'm used to doing by now.
Now, she looks pretty awesome by herself with the stand, but you know, she needs a base. So I decided to do a clear one to match the stand. I had some epoxy resin and I have a mold that I made some time ago. I don't have any resin dye, so I just decided to use the same pastel shavings to tint the resin and it worked pretty well. I didn't really care if I mixed it a lot because I was going to <laughs> quote unquote degas the resin in my vacuum chamber. Uh, but yeah, uh, I made it worse. I know you're not supposed to do this, but I know it's because the resin hardens in minutes and this epoxy resin has a 30 minute working time, if not more. But the problem is that it's too viscous to let the air out, so that was a fail. So I decided to do the old fashioned way, just pour it in and remove the bubbles with some heat. Fortunately, it did work. There were minor micro bubbles left, but they were going to be covered anyway, because I'm doing some small wave ripples to make it look like the water is gathering around her. I am using the water effects from Woodland Scenics. It's supposed to cure clear, but I added a different medium so it will look a little opaque. And I'm not mad at it, it looks pretty decent. Okay, okay, I know all of you are so excited to finally see her assembled, so I'll just shut up and show it to you. Let her rip! hope you enjoyed this process. It was a simple kit to work with. I can certainly say that E2046's quality and service actually has gone up in the last few years. So I can say I can recommend them. They're actually coming out with the rest of the sailors in their Super S attack. And their villain line is, wow, I've been very impressed with that. And for this particular figure, I actually recommend it to any newbie that wants to start the hobby. It was simple, it was easy, you can do it. You can do it. Like I said in the beginning of this video, this figure will be given away to a lucky subscriber. This is thanks to all of you and especially to my patrons over on Patreon that have made things easier for me to bring out more videos. Plus, they got first dibs on watching this video too. Okay, so you wanna know how you gonna win? So let me give you the 411 for everything. To participate in this giveaway, you must be a public subscriber and like this video. There's a link in the description box below where you will be able to fill it out. It's just simple information like your name and your contact information in case you win. You get extra points to win if you share this video on any of your social media platforms. But yeah, there's always a but. There's a catch. The only catch here is that you need to pay for postage. That's it. 
the figure is gonna be free, but you know, times are tough and situations are not ordinary. So what's gonna happen here is that if you win, you will have to agree to pay for postage. Now, I live in Mexico and I'm gonna send it wherever you live. Due to the current world events, in the case that I cannot send the package to your country or my country doesn't send to your country because of this, uh, the figure is still yours. So we can discuss what we can do to proceed in getting you that figure. Even if it takes a while, you'll get it. The form will be open for two weeks, so you have two weeks to get your name in there and share this to get extra points to win. I will announce the winner in the next video. I'm very excited that this piece is going to one of you. Knowing that you have a little piece of me with you makes me all warm and fuzzy inside. Plus, you'll get a one-of-a-kind piece accurate to the scene in the anime. Thanks again, my Risen Monkeys, for helping me get to this milestone. And thank you to all my patrons again for also doing the impossible and supporting me in these times. Remember that I also have an exclusive Patreon project. It is actually a fully nude, not safe for work, <laughs> figure that you will see me paint from start to finish and I will give you all the nitty gritty details on how to do it. So if you're interested in that, I would really would love if you would consider becoming my patron. And if you do become my patron, your name will be here along with the rest of the Risen Monkey Army. Don't forget to follow me on my social media. I am always active over there and I give plenty of updates on future projects and things that I'm working on. Hit that subscribe button and tickle that bell icon to get notifications on future videos in this channel. Until next time, my resin monkeys, may the odds be ever in your favor.